this is what Christopher Columbus would have seen when he first landed in Jamaica. Forestry expert Kurt McLaren leads me through one of the few untouched forest areas left on the island. It's one of the last remaining dry forests in the entire Caribbean and possibly in um, Central and South America. It could be lost permanently. Jamaica's forests are being cut down at an alarming rate. It would be too late to reverse the trend. I think we're about a year or two away from that. You will have a landscape that is just nothing, just flat and grass. So they'll cease to function as a, as a forest. That would affect the country's drinking water supply, as well as increasing the risk of natural disasters. The trees are being cleared for mining, hotels and housing estates. In this poor nation, the promise of development and the jobs it brings often trump environmental concerns as does necessity. Many poor families and businesses use trees for fuel. Wood and charcoal are traditional parts of Jamaican cooking. It's cheap, easily accessible, and restaurants like this one depend on it. This government patrol heads out to try and stop woodcutters and charcoal burners. Within minutes, they come across Melbourne Harvey on the track. Like many, he relies on selling wood for his income. He says he has no other option. Further on, one look like a dry wood for the, the government to have no job to the poor people. The government can't live find job for himself. So, you know... Government the, environmental the, coordinator, Dane Vassiana, can only warn him. She has little power to prosecute or offer him an alternative job. She says that adequately protecting Jamaica's forests will require a shift in thinking at the highest level. I couldn't say, John, that it's, it's a priority as it should be because people have, as you said, mentioned we're going in the direction of Haiti and I think more work has to be done. The patrol goes on. Six men to cover 11,000 hectares of irreplaceable forest. John Holman, CCTV, Jamaica.